Oh. Right, you ready? Yeah. Camera, yeah. action. Action, right, camera. Okay, here we go. Right, here we are, back in this workshop on a very windy day. You can hear the wind in the roof above us, so don't worry about that. And here we have another Kawasaki, another Kawasaki Z900A4. Correct. And it came in because, do you want to say, it's been rebuilt, but it's got a problem. He's rebuilt it. Yeah, and what yeah. was the problem? Uh, it was, he said it was burning oil, or leaking, sorry, leaking oil out of uh, the front of the uh, exhaust port. Right. On number three. And it's just arrived today, and so far you've taken the head off. I've done, off. done what's known as a leak down test. Yes. And uh, found that there was a lot of leakage past the exhaust valve on number four. So I thought that will pull the head off. Yeah. Investigate right. that. Yeah. And then I thought I might as well pull the barrels off and check all the rings and... Yes. Up from the base basket upwards, really. Mm -hmm. And a uh, good job I did, because I found a fault with the rings on number three. Yes, yeah, we mentioned that, yeah. We mentioned that and... Yeah, we're actually filming this out of order. This is just the intro that we've already talked yeah. about the, the actual <laughs> yeah. work. So we're out of order here. So, next step then is to talk to... Talk to the customer, uh, explain what I've found wrong, yeah. and uh, go from there. Okay, great. So as I say, this is out of sync at the moment. We're now going to cut to what we're talking about, the actual... You can edit it afterwards. Yeah, we will, we will. Right, great stuff. Now, just removing the, uh, each valve. I'm just removing this one valve because right. this is the only one that was leaking yeah. out of all the eight. Yes. Right, so we're going to remove the leaking valve. Yeah. Right, we're going to remove the leaking valve. Yeah. Right, we're going to remove the leaking valve. Yeah. Right, we're going to remove the leaking valve. Yeah. Right, we're going to remove the leaking valve. Yeah. Right, we're going to remove the leaking valve. Yeah. Right, we're going to remove the leaking valve. Yeah. Right, we're going to remove the leaking valve. Yeah. Right, we're going to remove the leaking valve. Yeah. Right, we're going to remove the leaking valve. Yeah. Right, we're going to remove the leaking valve. Yeah. Right, and every single one's like that. Is it from a different bloody engine somewhere? They've ground them down to fit. Seems a bit weird it to me. It could be. Sometimes you... you haven't got the one you want. You... I don't know. Seems a bit of a bodge. Well, let's look at them. They look the same. Them guys won't be doing. The head one's skimming, really. Yeah, it's not been skimming yet, it? Won't skimming properly. I mean, so I you're saying I pull the head gasket off? We'll pull the two head gaskets off. Look, they're all brand new, aren't they? They've never, no oil, seen, it? They've never seen oil or combustion. No, no. Um, they were that way up. Can you see how they've got this oval shape here, yeah, yeah, yeah. and not on this side? Mm -hmm. And I, I can't remember if they go upwards or downwards. I think they go downwards, right, and they've not they've, they've been put up in the up, up, up position. Yeah. It's got no um, markings. Oh, yeah. Look at this. You can put your one your finger across you there. See you see that? There's a, there's a groove there, there's a scratch, a big yeah. hollow. Yeah. So it's there. It was leaking. When I was, if that's number one and number two, when I was when I was doing a compression test, I was getting pressure coming up the cam, cam chain tunnel, mm -hmm. but only when I did the pressure test on number one and two. So I'm just wondering if that there, the air's been leaking across. Yeah. He's guys. told me that the and valve guys have been. Um, Reamed out and a thin sleeve put in. Looking at that, I can't see if they've been done or not. Yeah. Well, the, 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 they are bronze guides. Yeah. The, the, the seats are too wide. They've not been given a fair good cut. And you can see this rough finish here on it. It's almost like it's been ported. Yeah, the noise is from the, the wind outside. It is, yeah. Yeah, it has been ported. Yeah. So it was a 900, so it's a Z900. Is it an A4? So Z900 A4. Well, it's been given a 1015. Yeah, they, put, they, they bored out the block to, to, and fitted 1015 pistons. Yeah. He said it was leaking oil yeah. somewhere under here. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that engine, it looks like it's got no oil in it at all. It looks like it's not. Well, there's oil in the bottom end, but there's nothing in the I top think end. what is mistaken for oil has probably been a misfire. Okay. And you've had petrol. Or something petrol and carbon leaking here. Yes. Yeah. Out the exhaust. Because the clock's are new and it says it's done 16 miles. So yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not sure how that's the case, but yeah. But I think this is another nice. In this case, I said 900, which looks fantastic on the outside. It's a good one. But on the inside, it's not so fantastic. Well, he said the original speedometer had 85,000 on it. Yeah. So it's been rebuilt. The engine's been apart, he says, yeah. and it's had a new cam chain fitted. Yeah. Um, but there's also damage to the crankcase at the front that's been welded, I've spotted. Right. Um, but it, the original engine's done 85,000. Yeah. And he assures me that the gearbox is okay. Yeah. I mean, 
Well, hopefully it is, and hopefully it's not. But I, I don't know who's built the bottom end, whether it's the customer or, or whether he's had someone that have it done. I can't remember what he told me. But I've, I've stripped the barrel off, and I've found a fault on number three piston. And what's that fault? Yeah, if you look here, That chrome, chrome ring there, yes. that's the top ring. Yes. So it's fitted, that's the second ring. So those two rings are mixed up. Yeah, back to front. Okay. If you look at all the others, the chrome plated ring, which is the top yeah. ring, is in the right place on one. Which means that you're going to get lots of compression and probably oil as well. Yeah. It's going to get blow by in it. Yeah, you're going to get blow by. I mean, there the does look like there's evidence here. A bit of. But yeah, not on the others. Yeah, it's a little, little bit of. Um, so. Yeah, that only on that one, yeah. and that's the one where the rings are fitted wrong way around. Um, but when I did the leak down test, um, anything less than ten percent is like fabulous. And I was uh, on the number one and number two, I was getting seven to seven to eight percent leak down. But on number two and three, I was getting air up the cam chain tool. Right. So yes, that, 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 that's basically air past the rings. Yes. And then, and then it, and it's, it's coming up to, to the Poss tank. Possibly. <laughs> through, through that, through that yeah. damage to that gasket. Um, number four, you got. 35% loss, and I did the test several times just to confirm. Yeah. And it's uh, really bad leaking from exhaust valve. Because you can put your hand over the valve and hear it, yeah. feel it. Uh, and I thought the exhaust possibly bent. So you now removed that exhaust valve. Yeah. And what we found is doesn't look bent. No. There's no there's no evidence that the valves kissed the piston or anything. There's no marks on the valve. No, it's new. Uh, but when I pulled the valve out, there was a lot of carbon between the seat and, and, the, and, the, uh, and the valve face here. So I think it's just a bit of carbon stopping it shutting. Yeah. And if it's not been run, then that carbon's going to stay there, isn't it? Yeah. Gone yeah. Down. That's true. But when I did the leak down test, there's no camshafts in it, so I couldn't, no, no. I couldn't operate the valves. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and, and you know, this is why I don't buy restored bikes because you never really know what you're going you know, to get. It could look fantastic on the outside. You always do. Uh, lovely paintwork, lovely chrome, looks fantastic. Yeah. 16 miles in the clock, but the engine isn't right, is it? You've got yeah. mismatches, errors, God knows what. I mean, so. You get people spending a fortune on, yeah, yeah, 10, pounds, on, on, on cosmetics, yeah. and then you look at tank rubbers. Yeah. That are perished. Oh, they're all gone. Yeah, yeah. And there's a rubber strap here that's all perished. All now they, to change they're that, only, they're only they're only pennies. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, in relation to the uh, cost, of that, yeah. cost of the engine well, I'm, still, so I'm not doing that. So and they've they've skimped on stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Oh well. It's got MGO valves, which are like Taiwanese copies. And I never. Coils. Oh, yeah, yeah, the ignition coils here. Oh, yeah. MGO coils. Um, I've told the guy I would probably go down the Dyna. S, yeah, Dyna be. coils, well, Dynatech coils, yeah. and the ignition system's upgraded then, it's not 40 year old points. No. Handlebars are too far forward, they should be further back. Yeah. To be fair, that match for him has got. Yeah! Because he's a tall guy, he's long but You can see they're actually, pointing they're actually up. pointing upwards now. Yeah, quite comfortable. As you swing it back, they go level, yeah, yeah. which is where yeah. they should yeah, be. Like that, you? Yeah, you'd be like that, yeah. instead yeah. of like straight. That. Yeah. Okay, well. So what's next then? Are you going to do next? Are you going to... uh, well, I was just assessing it today and then I've got to get on to the guy who owns the bike him, yeah. and tell him what I've found. So what would you do next then with his head? Well, obviously you're going to fix that problem with the piston rings, hopefully. Yeah, that's just a swap, just a swap, that, swap the rings around. Yeah, yeah. And then... uh, I might take them off and put them in the bore and, and just ring end gap them. Yes. But I've done a leak down test and there's no... It's fine. The, the, well, there's very little air getting oh, past you the also rings. said before I started filming that the spark plugs on that head, you reckon three of them have been helicoiled already? Three have been helicoiled, yeah. well, but the last one that hasn't been, number four, number four, the spark plug's a bit loose, not loose, but it's a bit wobbly. Yeah, when you screw the plug here, even when it's fully, virtually fully seated, you can still wobble it. It's not. There's a lot of wear in the thread, so really that one needs yeah, to be well. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, the threads are all flattened with gears of changing plugs. Yeah. So, so fix that. What do you think you'll do? With the seats, you know, I'll get them all recut. Yeah. Uh, I'll probably get Roger Upperton's yeah. advice on whether to fit guides or not. Yeah. If they have been sleeved, then guides. Take them out. Yeah. Put, put well, new guides. Well, that's what. Well, the thing is, you you can change the guides. The guides, if they don't go back in the right place, 
you have to put an arbor in there yes, and, yeah. and recut all the seats to suit the, 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 so everything's in line. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and also, of course, the, this has been skin, it? No, it's been rubbed down. You can see all the high yeah, yeah, spots and those spots. Yeah. And then somebody's a bit mad here. Well, they've had, they've had the 6mm exhaust studs replaced with 8mm. Yeah, there's some damage there. But they've built it up well, yeah. which could have distorted the head. So any time you've done welding like this, you need to skim it to... to, to oh, check the seats. Yeah, I mean, like I say, there was a little bit of air leaking into the into the crankcase, past yeah. the rings. Yeah, I thought. It could be past that gasket there, where we yeah. found that damage. The one with the... Uh, There's a... Where's it gone? Yeah. That there, yeah. there. In fact, in fact, there's two. I can see two distinct lines here, like a little... Here, here. Well, you, you might be able to see it on the liner here. You know, there's a gap. It looks like there's some stain in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very, very. So you won't see it on. on, on you won't see it on camera. But you can just about see a stain there where something's been going on. So the air could have been leaking across yeah. and in, down, down. into the crankcase. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Which is where so it's. it's uh, did your Jeff do the skimming, or is that done by? No, no it's. Uh, it. I, I take, it to, take it to head shop. Yeah. In fact, I've got another engine on the bench there, and the block oh, the, and the uh, head. The XS 750. Well, the corrosion gets in at the front, yeah. and it hits all this surface, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. eats away. So to get rid of it, the corrosion yeah. Yeah. alone. Yeah. All, sometimes these line, these steel liners settle, mm -hmm. and then you have a step here. Yeah. So you've got to skim it to bring everything level. Mind you, I can't feel it. Well, it, you know, it, it, it's just, even if it's a few thou, yeah. you know, you'd have to put a, a straight edge across there and see if you can get a feeler blade under it. Sometimes you can actually feel a lip here on the liner. Well, to be fair, you, you have a mark one from there, can measure quite a small gap. You know, yeah. your, your fingertips are wonderful yeah, thing. It yeah. can it can measure. measure up to a thousandth of an inch yes, yeah. difference. Yeah, anyway, so lesson learned then. If you're going to restore a bike, or buy a bike, make sure the bloody engine's been done right. Not sure how you can do that, but for, for me it's like buy an old bike in bits and get it built up. You know what you get, and then you can see every single step of the way. That's uh, that's well. that's most of my work is yeah. putting putting 50 years of cock ups right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, e even those spark plugs, those metal covered bath spark plugs, you think, oh no, rust. And that's like a way. If it rains, mate. They used, to split, they used to they used to they used to take them off yes. when yes. they were selling them. Yeah, because they were crap. Because they tracked out in the yeah, rain. Tracked out in the rain. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. That. I had a bike that did that. Yeah. It was awful. And you touch it and you get electric you get electric shock. Yeah, not good, not good. Right. Okay. So we'll leave you with that now. And so the last thing we can talk about today is the troubles you've had with the starter motor that I brought you not mm. long ago, which is from a Honda CB900F. CB900F. Which is a, in theory, replacement for a standard Kawasaki start motor. Yeah. But it's more powerful. It's a 0 0.8 kilowatt. 0 0.8 than... kilowatt. And according to all the forums, you need one yeah. on, a, on a big on engine. A big engine. Or something that's supercharged. So, so since you had issues trying to start your supercharged bike. Yeah. Possibly it was because maybe that was, that was the issue. It, didn't quite have enough oomph. Possibly, Possibly. I'm, not, I'm not pressing no, the button yet. No, no, no. So it. I said to you, well, when I bring it, you can fit it to your bike first, just temporarily, and just see if it helps. Yeah. So he said, oh, great, okay, I'll do that. But then it turned out that wasn't so easy to do. No. No. So go on then, what have you had to do to start the motor to the make it fit? The, the terminal on the starter motor yeah. points backwards. On the Kawasaki's, they, put, they, they point oh, downwards. downwards. Yes. Uh, but with it pointing backwards, um, the, the engine sprocket cover would foul it, yeah. or whatever outrigger plate, whatever you run on it, yes. would foul the terminal. Yes. So you have to re you have to revolve the, the the magnet case on the um, on the starter motor so that the post is vertically downwards. Yes. Uh, but that's not as easy as you think because then you've got internal webbing in the in the castings. It gets in the way. Either end, of, uh, it gets in the way. Mm -hmm. So you've got to grind. For okay. So I've had to do all that on the starter yes. motor you supplied. Which I thought was a good starter motor, but it turned out it wasn't. It's been stored somewhere damp yes. and there was rust inside it. There yeah. was uh, the the little bearing on one end had seized, mm -hmm. but luckily you unseized it. it. It freed off yes. and I put some light oil on it and right. there was no notchiness and it was right. perfect. Right, okay. So it was better than I thought. Right, okay. And just next to me now, I can see you've just fitted it. Well, you, you said you'd lend it me. Yes, yes. And I've trial fitted it to my bike. Yeah. 
Um, so it's ready for a ready for a test. Um, a test. Done it, yeah. So let well, me I tested uh, the starter motor before I fixed oh, yes. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've not actually yeah. tried to turn the bike over no, with it no. yet. So let me just uh, move the camera. We can just point it to point out what we're talking about. Right, yeah. So let's move the camera. We're now going to focus down on your engine, and there's the CB nine hundred F starter motor, all fitted. Modified, and modified, fitted. fitted. Hopefully, fingers crossed. Two fingers crossed. Yes. It's going to help you start that engine without any issues. Yeah. But you've just done it, and while you've done it, you've also just touched up a bit of paintwork as well while we were yes talking, and um, you'll let that paint dry and harden off, and then at some point soon you'll hit the starter motor and see. Uh, well, I've got to put the air filter back on. Yes. Which is here. All right. Yeah. That's going to go that's here. That's the that's the air filter for the end of the supercharger. Yeah. It's got to go on there. Yeah. So that can go on, and yeah. then I've got a water injection System. nozzle in, yeah. in the end there yeah which is that's got to connect to it yeah there's your water injection there that's, that's a pump so that's got to go on yeah. and then uh, I might I might be taking the baffles out of the exhaust because I think yes. that could be my problem yeah we talked about that a while ago didn't we when um did we talk about that last on camera I can't remember. Uh, no 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 we're talking the chat we're talking the chat yeah when it comes to the baffles I mentioned it that um on my Harley my uh, 131 Kipikin Charlie when it was first built the engine should be putting out about 140 brake yeah. at the crank, so maybe 125, 130 at the rear wheel. And I got the chance to put it on a brand new dyno about 10 years ago. Yeah. And so we put it on, run it up, and it said, no, no, it makes 70. You what? No, 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 that's not right. And I thought, your dyno's wrong, mate. It must be recording <laughs> half half what it should be. No, it's not. It's we yeah, we're saying, oh, hang on, hang on. And it didn't feel slow because it, it had the torque, you know, but it just didn't have much top end. Yeah. But it also said, hang on, your air fuel ratio is off the blooming scale. It's so rich, is it? Well, it's got the correct jetting mm -hmm. for the bikini carb right from the factory from Merch. So yeah. it should be perfect. Yeah. It's not. Okay, what should we do? Well, let's uh, fit a smaller main jet, smaller jets, because then we'll get the air fuel ratio better. So we went down and down and down. And in the end, we had the jetting for an 883 Sportster. And this is on a 2.2 litre bloody big Evo. Yeah. Yeah, there you go, mate. You, you know, your jetting's fine now, but it's still in the make 71 brake horsepower. I'm thinking, oh my God, I'm after, what's going on here? And someone said, oh, hang on. Um, left it for a day. And I sort of went online, asked a few questions. Oh, yeah. At the time, these Vance and Hines, it's called uh, Short Shots. Yes. Oh, yeah. So they're great on a standard bike, mate, but on your sort of bike, they're crap because they don't flow enough. Take your baffles out and see what happens. Okay. Too much back pressure, yeah. So went back next day, took the baffles out, which only really takes 10 minutes, put it back in the dyno. My God, it was loud. It was so loud. There's like flames going out of it. But straight away, under 19 brake horsepower. There you go. But now it's really weak. Yeah, so we went back. This, yeah, to go put the bigger, put jets, the bigger back. jets back in again. Yeah. Under 29 brake horsepower. That's more like it. Brilliant. Right, okay, fantastic. I'm happy. I'm going home now. The damn thing was embarrassingly loud. Like people looking around thinking, what the hell is that? It's just like stupidly loud, just yeah. these open pipes. So that's why I then had a two into one system made in yeah. stainless, which I still got on the bike. lowered the top end down a wee bit to about 127 but it upped the torque yeah it, will it, do. it, it filled up a little hole in the torque curve yeah so that's what I've got now so when you said to me oh yeah I've got these problems it's rich because you think you said the, the spark plugs were black yeah um, so it could either be I reckon that the sender to tell the system you now got a warm engine so it's no longer on choke perhaps that's not working right because it's not it's you don't know well I, th I thought that so i've changed the engine temperature sensor yeah and it was still running rich yeah, and then not. i had a bit of a think about it and i thought well when i last ran this and it ran fine it was in 2019 yeah and i i can't remember whether the exhausts were baffled well i remember the first time i filmed it was march and 2019 it, and it wasn't baffled then no it was, that was one of the first like, it was flames system. shooting out of it yeah I think I rode it towards the end of that year yeah and it ran okay yeah I know and the, the air fuel ratio was good yeah um, and now it doesn't and I'm thinking is it me baffling the baffling it that's caused it to run rich yeah because you've only got you've basically got four separate because pipes because the map's not changed no no, no you've got uh, four separate pipes with a baffling each one yeah this engine is what, what is it 1260 now 1260 plus it's supercharged it's yeah plus it's supercharged yeah. yeah so as a temporary sort of test what I suggest is you take the baffles out and try it. That's the next step. But 
the baffles are on the right hand side of the bike yes, and I can't get at it at no, the moment. No, because it's against the thing, yeah. Yeah, because it's against And it's January, it's cold, no one's going to be bothering what, no, riding bikes. I need, to, I need to swap these two bikes around. Yes. So yeah. I can, but yeah. I wanted to work on this. The main work was on the left hand side of the yes, bike. Yeah, get started. So that's then. nearly done now. So yeah. once that's finished, once the air filter's back on, you can try I can and move the bike over mm. and then get at the exhaust system yes, yeah. and remove the baffles. Ah, the joys of uh, custom bikes, they are special bikes anyway. Yeah. Well, I've had this bike 30 seven years yeah yeah but there aren't many people who keep a bike for such a long time but when you've had it a long time you kind of get attached to them and uh you know I mean, i've always kept my bikes yeah i as well i hate i hate i mean the eliminator i'm restoring here yes, which yeah. is under this sheet yes yes i'm just restoring that i've had that 30 years yeah 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 I'm quite happy with the way the bike is at the moment. Yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. I just want to ride it. Yeah, yeah, you solve those problems. If it's constantly in the workshop being upgraded, you never ride it. No, no. Um, and sometimes there's too much work to do over the winter months. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you've got a lot to do in here. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bikes in here. Oh, you've got a frame over there. That's well, that's eight. technically eight because all that's the bits eight. are there. Yeah, yeah, that's the KH, isn't it? Yeah. And you've got all the, and then there your bikes. Six, and you've got, six, six are mine, and yes. two are two of my wife's. Yes, yeah. yeah. And you've got my engine there, and yeah. you've got people's bikes next door. That's all customers' bikes. Next yeah, yeah. You got the Z13. You got the Jeep Z900R. Yeah. And you've oh, and you've also got another eliminator. Another eliminator yeah, in there. Yeah. with main Kevs. Yeah. And, and some bicycles as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. Need, I need a clear out, I yeah. need a spring clear out. Oh, don't we all, mate, don't we all. Right, okay, on that note then, we'll end it here. So, anybody watching, thanks for watching, and uh, cheers. Cheers.